Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. I hope everyone is having a happy crochet or knitting day. Well this crochet tutorial is a pattern I did several years ago where I did two different soap bags. Now I did the video of the soap bag here with the solid colored shell stitch but I never did the video for the striped soap bag. So I thought it would be fun to do it in some Christmas colors because I know at this time of year we're always searching for those quick and easy patterns to make as gifts for family friends and co-workers so I thought I would do the video of the striped soap bag especially because I have one viewer who asked me to do the video so I thought I'm going to do it in red and white for Christmas and I have the pattern pack available and again I produced this pattern years ago and it is on my website so you get both patterns with that pattern pack. So I'll put the link to the first crochet tutorial I done with the solid colored shell stitch soap bag and then this is the second pattern that you're watching now with the stripes. Now what's fun about the stripes is you can reverse the colors and make the double crochet the red and the single crochet the white. You can customize it in whatever colors you choose. So if you know the colors of your friends or co-workers bathroom, you might be able to customize these for their bathroom or make them in the holiday colors, which are also fun. So this is the one we're making today, but let me show you the other samples I have. This is a sample of the solid colored shell stitch soap bag. And again, I'll have the link to that crochet tutorial in the description box underneath the video. You can see how beautiful it looks in those solid colors with those shell stitches so that is a cream colored then I have a pink one and what's fun is if you get a little basket and you can make several of these and just have them in your bathroom this next one is the reversing of the colors of the striped bag. You can see this one, the double crochets are in the white. And in this one, the single crochets are in that lighter cream color. So it gives you an idea of how they look when you reverse colors using different colors. And then here's another solid shell stitch one. You can see the little hanging loop, which makes it so easy to hang in the shower. And this one was the solid shell stitch soap bag. And this was made with, I think, one of the splash colors in the Premier Home Cotton. So those are some of the samples of the soap bag. And again, this tutorial is for the striped bag only. So this is the one we're making today. So let me tell you everything you're going to need to make your little soap bag. So to make your hanging soap bag, you're going to need two colors. Now you can also make this in one color if you choose. If you don't want to change colors, you can just choose one color. I chose red and I chose white. Now I'm using the Premier Home Cotton. I'm using the solid colors and it comes in 131 yard, 120 meters, 2.65 ounces and 75 grams. It's 85% cotton and 15% polyester. Polyester, and that extra 15% polyester just helps make your colors stay brighter longer. Now the Premier Home Cotton is classified as a number four medium weight cotton. It is machine wash, tumble dry low, so it's machine wash and dryable. And I'm using color cranberry today, color number 38-07. I'm also using the color white, color 38-01. Now you can use your own favorite cotton if you have a favorite cotton. This is one of the cottons that I use a lot in some of my kitchen and bath designs. Now you don't need very much. I'm going to say you need about a half an ounce of each color. But if you buy one skein of each color, you're going to get several soap bags out of one skein. And again, you can reverse the color and you can make some with white and red or maybe reverse it and make red for your double crochet and white and just make two reversing the colors if you're giving them as gifts would be really pretty. So for the project today, you're going to need, I would say, about a half an ounce of two different colors of your choice. Again, I'm using the cranberry and white. And you're also going to need a size H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. So grab your yarn, 
grab your hook, and let's get our project started. For our project today, I'm starting with the white, and because I have a white table and I'm using white yarn, I am using a blue backer board so you can see your stitches better. I'm beginning with my white, but you can reverse these colors if you wish, if you want to use two different colors. So we're going to begin and we're going to chain eight. You're going to yarn over the hook and pull it through the loop on your hook. This creates your first chain. The loop on your hook does not count as a chain. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we're ready to begin round one. For round one, we're going to skip this first chain and we're going to single crochet into that second chain. Insert into the second chain from hook, work a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through that chain. You have two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. That's how you make a single crochet. You're going to single crochet in each stitch across. Single crochet into that next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next chain. Single crochet into the next chain. And I'm just going to work across to the end of my chain. I'm over at the last chain and single crochet into that last chain. So when you look at your work, you're going to have a total of seven single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now we're going to form our corner and we're just going to chain two, one, two. And then you're going to just turn your work and we're going to start working across the bottom of the foundation chain. And then this piece of yarn that's left over from where I started my chain, I'm just going to hold up against my work and work right over that strand of yarn. You're going to insert right into the first chain. So if you're not sure, just look for that last single crochet you made, follow it down to the base of the stitch and that's where your first chain is insert into that chain and work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next chain. Again, just follow that stitch down and work a single crochet. And I'm working right over top of that strand of yarn that was left over from starting my chain. And just continue and work one single crochet in each chain across. I'm over to my last stitch, so I know I have one more chain to go. And when you look at your work, you're going to have a total of seven single crochet across the bottom of your work. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now to end this round, we need to make our corner, so we're going to chain two, one, two, and now we're just going to slip stitch our round together. We're going to insert under the top two loops of that very first single crochet of the round. You're going to yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round one is finished. Now we're ready to begin round two. For round two, we're going to begin and we're going to chain two. One, and two. This beginning chain two will count as the first double crochet stitch. You're going to double crochet in each of the next six single crochet across. Because the chain two counts as the first stitch, we're going into the next stitch to start our double crochet. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next stitch, yarn over, and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops and this is a double crochet. Now because UK and US terms are different that's why I like to show the first stitch so this is in USA crochet terms. 
we're going to double crochet in each of the next five stitches. That's one of five. Double crochet into the next stitch. That's two. Double crochet into the next stitch. That's three. Double crochet into the next stitch. That's four. And double crochet into the last stitch. And that's five. And now you're going to be over at your turning corner chain two. So into the corner chain two space, we're going to work five double crochet. Yarn over, insert into that corner chain two space, insert right underneath it, and work five double crochet. One. Two. Three. four, and five. So again, when you look at your work, you should have a total of five, one, two, three, four, five, five double crochet all into that corner chain two space. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next seven single crochet stitches. Yarn over, make sure that you go into that very first stitch. Your stitches in the corner may be trying to hide it. Insert under the top two loops. Work a double crochet. That's one of seven. Double crochet into the next stitch. That's two. Double crochet into the next stitch. That's three. Double crochet into the next stitch. That's four. Insert into the next stitch. Work a double crochet. That's five. Double crochet into the next stitch. That's six. And then double crochet into the last single crochet across. And that's seven. So again, when you look at your work, you're going to have five double crochet in the corner, and then you worked one double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. And then when you look at your work, we're back over to our turning corner chain two space. So we're going to work five double crochet into this turning corner chain two. Yarn over, insert underneath the corner chain two space, work five double crochet. One, Two, three, four, and five. And this is what your work is going to look like so far. So now since we did our five double crochet in the corner chain two, we're going to attach our new color and we're going to join with the new color. And then we're just going to carry the two colors up the inside of our work. So no fastening off and changing colors. We're just going to keep pulling our new colors up. So I'm just going to take my red and I'm just going to tie a double knot around my white strand of yarn trying to do this so you can see me. I know my hands in the way. I tie one knot and then I go ahead and tie a second knot. And then I just take my strand of yarn from tying the knot and I just pull it down to where it goes up against where my white is right up against that last stitch. So we're going to have two strands of yarn. We're not fastening anything off and we're just going to pull up the color we need next. So I'm just going to drop the white and pull up my red. 
So now we're going to come over and we're going to join in the top of this beginning chain two. You're going to count up one, two, insert into the top of that chain, and then with your red yarn, you're just going to yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. And when you look, you can see that it closed the stitch with the white, and now your red is the red loop that starts the next round. So round two is finished. Now you should have a total of 24 double crochet around your work. So if you don't have the correct number, double check your work and make sure you have 24 double crochet at the end of round two. Now we're ready to begin round three. Now round three and round four will be our repeat rounds. We're going to begin with a chain one. You're going to insert back into that same joining stitch and I just go right underneath to the left side, insert back into that stitch, work a single crochet. You're going to insert into the next double crochet under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch around and I'll meet you at the end of round three. I'm over at the end of round three. This is what your work looks like and you can see how the bottom of your soap bag is starting to form and then it's going to start forming the sides of your little soap bag. So I'm over at the end of round three and you should have a total of 24 single crochet around. And then once you make your last single crochet, you want to always join with your next color. You're going to insert your hook into that very first single crochet stitch under the top two loops, drop your red, pick up your white, and then pull your white through that stitch and through the loop on your hook to join. And then after I do this, sometimes this loop wants to get loose when you pull that through. Just take that red strand of yarn and tighten that stitch up. You don't want a big gap there, so just tighten that up. So now we're ready to begin round four. For round four, you're going to chain two. One, two. This beginning chain two will count as your first double crochet stitch. You're going to double crochet into the very next stitch and I'm always working under the top two loops. Work your double crochet. And now we're going to work one double crochet in each stitch around. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. And continue and work one double crochet in each stitch around and I'll meet you at the end of round four. I'm over at the end of round four. This is what your work should look like and you should have a total of 24 double crochet around and that's counting your beginning chain two. So now we're ready to join our round so again you always join with your next color. You're going to go over to the top of that beginning chain two, and if there's a big gap here from this joining of the red, you just want to take that red strand of yarn and pull that tight so you don't have a big gap there. All you have to do is pull on that red. So now go over to the top of that beginning chain two, insert into the top of the second chain, one, two. Grab your red, pull it through that stitch, and pull it through the loop on your hook. And do you see how it got really loose when I tried to pull that through? So then just grab your white strand of yarn and just pull that and tighten that up. So again, we're carrying our yarn up through the inside of our work. So now to continue working on your soap bag for rounds five through 12, you're going to click back on the video and you're going to repeat rounds three and four 
a total of four more times. So again, to continue working on your soap bag for rounds five through 12, you're going to click back on the video and just repeat rounds three and four a total of four times. I'll meet you at the end of round 12. I'm over at the end of round 12. We just repeated rounds three and four four more times. So I just worked my last stitch of round 12. So now we want to join with the red. So after you work your last stitch, come over to that beginning chain two, count up one, two, insert into the top of that chain two, drop your white, pick up your red, and then yarn over with the red, pull through that chain, and then pull through the loop on your hook. And then I always like to pull on this white and tighten that up. So now we're done with color A, our white. So I'm just going to flip this over. I'm going to fasten off my white. And then I'm just going to tie a double knot. I like to make sure my ends are nice and secure because you're using this as a soap bag. You're going to be rubbing it and moving it back and forth and you really want to make sure your work stays together. So round 12 is finished. Our white is fastened off your color A or whatever color you're using. And now we're ready to begin round 13. To begin round 13, you're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet back into the top of that beginning chain two where you joined, insert right into the top chain, work your single crochet. You're going to chain one and you're going to skip this next stitch. Now we're ready to begin our repeat. Into the next stitch, you're going to work a single crochet you're going to chain one and you're going to skip the next stitch. That is the repeat. Into the next stitch, work a single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch. And you're just going to continue and into the next stitch, work a single crochet, chain one, and skip the next stitch. Repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end of round 13. I'm over at the end of round 13. I just ended the round with a repeat of a single crochet into the stitch. You chained one and you skipped a stitch. We repeated that around and when you get to the end you have one stitch remaining and we skip that stitch with the last repeat. So we're just going to join under the top two loops of that very first single crochet stitch we made. Insert under the top two loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So round 13 is finished, and now we're going to do round 14, our final round. We're going to skip this beginning single crochet, and we're going to slip stitch into this next chain one space. Yarn over, pull through that chain one space, and pull through the loop on your hook. Now for this round, we're going to be working into the chain one spaces only. We're skipping the single crochet stitches. We're going to begin and we're going to chain one. You're going to work two single crochet back into that same beginning chain one space. One and two. Now we're going to work a picot stitch. We're going to chain three, one, two and three. You're going to bring your hook to the front of your work and insert right into the top front loop of that last stitch made and then take your hook right out through the side of the stitch right into that loop of yarn underneath. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You just made your pico stitch and we're going to repeat that around. Now we're going to begin our repeat we're going to skip the next single crochet into the next chain one space, work two single crochet. One and two. You're going to work your picot stitch. You're going to chain three, one, two, 
three, bring your hook around to the front of your work, insert from top to bottom through the front top loop of the last stitch made, and then right in the side of the stitch in the loop of yarn directly underneath, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Your Pico stitch is made. So I'll show you one more time. Again, this is the start of the repeat. You're going to skip the next single crochet into the next chain one space, work two single crochet. One and two. You're going to chain three for your picot stitch. Bring your hook back around to the front of your work. Insert your hook from top to bottom through the top front loop of the last stitch worked and then right into that loop in the side of the stitch directly below. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Your picot stitch is made. So go ahead and continue. You're going to skip the next single crochet, work two single crochet into the next chain one space, and then work your picot stitch. Repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end of round 14. I'm over at the end of round 14. I just worked my last repeat with that picot stitch. And now we're just going to join into the top of that very first single crochet stitch of the round. Insert under the top two loops. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So now we are done with our red, so I'm just going to fasten off my red. When I fasten off, I chain two. I pull my hook up, yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So I'll be just weaving my ends in on the wrong side of my work. Just use a yarn needle, bring it back to the wrong side, and use the matching color, the red, and weave it in through the matching color stitches, and then back across. And if you have enough yarn, weave it in a third time. And then if you split one of these strands of yarn, it really helps hold those ends in. So now we're going to do our back hanging loop. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our hanging loop. So we want to make sure we're on the back side. So again, this is the front of the work. We fastened off on the top left hand side, just flip it over. And then the yarn where you fastened off will be on the right hand side. Now in my instructions, I did make a mistake and say, join two rounds below. It's actually three. You want to go in this double crochet row. It does say round 12 in the instructions, but it's three rounds below. So look at your work and you want to find the center two stitches. So I'm looking here and I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This one's almost on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and come over and you're going to skip five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And these are our two center stitches. And then you're going to see one, two, three, four, five. So again, I'm going to come over to the sixth stitch. We're going to skip one, two, three, four, five stitches, and I'm going to insert my hook around that sixth double crochet. And then I'm just going to bring my white up and I'm gonna leave about an eight to 10 inch length because I'm just going to pull my yarn through. And then I will be securing this with a knot and weaving my end in on the wrong side. So very important that you knot this after you do this hanging loop or your loop may come apart. We're going to chain one and then I'm going to work a single crochet around the post of this stitch. You're going to insert from one side of the stitch to the other. You're just going around the post of the stitch and then I'm working a single crochet. You're going to chain 27. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. That's one, two, three, four, five. Continue until you have 27 chains made, and I'll be back and show you how to finish your hanging loop. I have my 27 chains made. Now make sure that your chain is not twisted. Just run your finger right up the chain, and then just keep your finger on top of that chain so it doesn't twist. And then we want to come over to the very next double crochet stitch. Just insert from the one side of the stitch to the next side underneath the post of that next stitch, and then you're going to single crochet. 
yarn over, pull underneath and around the post of that stitch, yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. So we are done making our hanging loop, so I'm just going to fasten off. And again, when I fasten off, I chain two, pull my hook up, yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So that is your hanging loop. So now I'm just going to pull my yarn on the inside of my bag. So I just take my hook and pull that on the inside. And then I'm going to do the same with this side. And if you pull it from the one side of the stitch where you tie it off and then pull it through that side on the inside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yarn needle and go on the inside. Now remember, this one is knotted off, so this one is okay. You just want to weave this one in and out through the stitches. This, this side here, the first side, you need to make sure you use your yarn needle and knot that to the inside of these stitches before you weave it in. Make sure you knot that. Now, I don't have my yarn needle here with me right now, so I'll do that later. So I'm just going to put that down inside my bag. So again, our hanging loop is made, and the only thing we have to do yet is our draw string for the top of the bag. Now for the drawstring, you can choose whichever color you wish. We're going to be weaving it through these chain one spaces of this red round right here. So you can choose either the white or you can choose the red. So I believe I'm going to choose white for my drawstring. So grab whatever color you want to use. So I chose white, so I already have my white attached to my hook with a double knot. And all we have to do is chain 60. You're going to yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, and that creates your first loop. Again, the loop on your hook does not count as a chain. That's one, two, three, four, five. Continue until you have 60 chains, and I'll meet you after I get my chains made. I'm back. I have my 60 chains made and now I'm just going to fasten off my work. Now I like to leave a little bit longer length when I fasten off just so I have something to grab a hold of when I'm trying to weave that through. Now because we chained, I don't have to chain two. I'm just going to pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, and then just pull. And it makes a nice knot at the end of your work. So now we're going to take our soap bag. Now it's up to you whether you want to tie the bow in the front or if you want to tie the bow in the back. I like to tie the bow in the front. So what I'm going to do is you're just going to find your front center of your soap bag. So when I look at my soap bag, just kind of look at the chain one spaces. Here's one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go into this third chain one space here. So what I want to do is because I want to tie it in the front, I want both my ends coming from the back to the front. So I'm going to reach in to the inside of my work and push my drawstring from the inside out through the front. And then I'm going to start weaving. I'm going to take the other end and I'm just going to weave from the left to the right around my bag. So I come out the front and now you want to come back to the back of your work and then pull from the back to the front with the other end. And then we're just going to weave that in and out through the chain one spaces. So now we want to go from the front to the back through the next chain one space. And then you're just going to work your way around, find your next chain one space. So now your drawstring is on the inside, so you want to go from the inside to the outside and pull from the inside and push your drawstring through the next chain one space to the outside, to the right front side of your work. And then you're just going to continue weaving it in and out around your work. So again, you're on the outside of your bag. Take your drawstring from the outside to the inside. And then you want to go from the inside to the outside in the next chain one space. And you're going to continue working in that manner until you get your drawstring weaved in back around to the front of your work. And I'll meet you there. 
my drawstrings are all weaved in. Now what you want to do is if your drawstrings are crooked, like maybe this one is up here and this one's down here, just gently take your drawstring and just pull it a little bit to whichever side you need it to be on until your drawstrings are even. Now I don't like to leave my ends real long, so I'm just going to come up and I'm just going to trim them about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to take my soap. Now I have ivory soap. Now I suggest if you're giving this as a gift, what I would do is I would probably wrap this in maybe a beautiful cellophane wrap and then maybe poof it up at the top and then insert your soap if you're giving these as a gift and let that paper hang out so they know that it's wrapped up and new and fresh soap. If you're using it for yourself, then you can just unwrap your soap insert your soap into your soap bag and then you just want to tie it into a bow so our soap bag is finished the little bow is tied our soap is inside our little soap bag we even have the hanging loop to hang it in the shower and now it's all ready to use so this is just a quick and easy idea if you're looking for some fun small projects to give as gifts for the holidays now this is the video tutorial for the striped soap bag i do have a pattern pack that includes two different soap bag patterns so I'll include the link for the solid colored shell soap bag that I did the video for and I showed both soap bags but I never done the video for this one until now so I hope you enjoyed doing this quick and easy project I hope it gives you some great ideas for the holidays for friends family and co-workers just make sure you know what their favorite soap is and include the soap with their little soap bag if you're giving it as a gift so thank Thank you everybody for stopping by today and crocheting with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the crochet fun here at Creative Grandma's channel. So until next time, happy crocheting everyone.